Another application of integration in business and economics is around the area of annuities and money streams. We're going to answer the question today, how do we model investments with calculus? And we're going to look at several different types of investments. And each type has to be handled a little bit differently. The first is going to be a non-interest earning continuous money stream. And the idea here is we have a continuous money stream coming in from maybe an investment or maybe a business. And that money that's coming in is not going to earn interest, but we just want to know how much money has come in. And the way we calculate the final amount is we take the integral from 0 to the amount of time that passes of f of t dt, where t, capital T, is the length of time. So this is going to be our first function of the day. Non-interest continuous money stream is just the integral from 0 to t of the function. So let's say we have revenue flowing continuously. into a company at a rate of $250,000 per year. How much revenue accumulates? in five years. Well, to find that final amount, we just integrate from 0 to the end of our time, the five years, of the function, which in this case is just 250,000 dt. And sometimes it's a function that might peak in the summer and drop during the winter, like if you were selling ice cream. So it might be an actual equation. This time, though, it seems to be continuous all year long, $250,000 throughout the year. So if we integrate this, that's just going to be 250,000t. That's going to be integrated from 0 to 5. So we plug that in. We get 250,000 times 5 minus 0, which is? $1,250,000 at the end of the five years. Now, this isn't a very exciting example because we aren't earning any interest in it, and the equation becomes quite predictable. So let's start talking about interest. And we're going to eventually come back to this continuous money stream earning interest. But first, we have to do a little bit of foundational work along the way. So. We're going to next talk about a one-time lump sum investment with continuous interest. And this one's not actually a calculus equation. You probably saw it in pre-calc and maybe even in your algebra studies. The function for a one-time lump sum with continuous interest is a equals pe to the rt. That's our second function of the day, where a is the future value of p invested at 
R rate for T time. So for example, if I take that same $250,000 that the company had before, and it is invested at 6% for five years. Notice we're not putting $250,000 in over and over again. This is a one-time investment. I throw two hundred fifty dollars in the account, walk away, come back in five years, and I want to know what's in the account now. Well, we're looking for that future value A. P is the amount that's initially invested, the principal of $250,000 times e to the r, the interest rate, as a decimal is 0.06, because we have to move the decimal point twice, times the amount of time, which is five years. And then we just have to plug that into the calculator. And when we do, we should end up with $337,464.70. But again, that's a one-time lump sum investment with continuous interest. And it does not require calculus to solve. And this is a business calculus class. So let's extend that one-time lump sum value and make it into what we're going to call the future value of an annuity. And what an annuity is, is something where we make regular investments and each of those investments are earning interest. The classic example of this is a retirement account where you're going to put $100 in your retirement account every month. Put $100 in January, earn some interest, and then $100 in February, earn even more interest. $100 in March, earn even more interest. And we're going to keep earning interest. And this is closely related to the one-time lump sum, but now we're going to add up all those individual investments. We want the total area under that entire curve over time, which means we end up with an integral is the integral from 0 to n of p e to the rt dt, which you notice is that one-time investment formula. But we're going to integrate it over n, which is the number of investments. So this is our second equation for the day. And we're going to say that is where a is the future value. of n investments of p at interest rate r. And a warning here, we have to watch the units. If we're making investments once a year, we're going to keep the interest rate at a once a year interest rate. But if we're making investments once a month, that interest rate needs to be adjusted to a monthly interest rate by dividing by 12. If we're making investments every day, then we need to take that interest rate and make it a daily interest rate by dividing by 365. So be very careful with the units when doing annuities. Here's an example. Let's say a company invests $250 a month for five years at 6% interest. We want to know how much is in the account then at the end of five years. Well, again, we're going to be careful. We're making our investments monthly, which means the interest rate of 0.06, the annual interest rate, needs to be divided by 12 to get 0.005. And we're going to use that for our monthly interest rate. OK, 
So now our future value, the final amount, is the integral from 0 to the number of investments. Here we have to be careful, too. We're, making, we're going five years, but we're doing one investment every month. So there's actually 60 investments is the number of months. So not only are we adjusting R, the interest rate, to be monthly, we have to adjust the number of investments to be monthly as well. So we're investing from 0 to 60 months. And the monthly investment is $250 times e to the r, which is 0.06t dt. Well, we know the antiderivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff. And then we divide by the 0.06. When we do 250 divided by 0.06, we end up with 50,000 integrated from 0 to 60. So that means we've got 50,000 e to the 0.06 times 60 minus 50,000. And when we plug 0 into the exponent, we end up with e to the 0, which is just 1. So we have 50,000 times 1. And then when we plug this into our calculator, we'll find out how much is in the account at the end of the five years should be $17,492.94. And so that's how we can calculate the future value of an annuity. If we're putting so much in every month or every year, we can calculate how much is in the account, including the interest earned over the time. Now, with the annuity option, money's coming in in chunks all at the same time. Every month, boom, $250 is in. Next month, boom, $250 goes in. That is different than what we're going to call D, where interest is earned on a continuous money stream. A continuous money stream means money's coming in all the time, kind of nonstop. It's coming in day, night, all the time. Money's always being deposited in the account a little bit at a time. And as we look at this continuous money stream, we're going to compare this thing called the present value versus the future value. We're going to call the future value first, fv, is going to be equal to e to the r times capital T times the integral from 0 to capital T of the function times e to the negative r lowercase t dt. That'll give us the future value. That tells us where f of t is the rate of flow with interest rate. R for time t from, and usually we're interested from the beginning all the way to some final t. And what the future value tells us, just to clarify, the future value gives what the investment will be worth in the future. So I'm going to invest money over a whole bunch of time, and I want to know what it's going to be worth in the future. That is going to be the future value. Contrast that with the present value which is almost the same integral. It just doesn't have that first part out front. It's the integral from 0 to t 
of f of t e to the negative r t dt where again f of t is the rate of flow with interest rate R for time t from 0 to t to capital T. But present value is a different interpretation. Present value says this is the amount needed now as a lump sum. to invest and grow to the equivalent money stream over time. So rather than having a the money earned slowly over time and be invested, we're just going to have a lump sum and stick it into an investment and leave it there and come back. The present value would give you the same amount. The idea is the future value requires less money, but the present value, you have the money up front. And sometimes you can use that to make a decision about whether or not you want to make an investment into a certain product. So let's do just that. Number two. Let's say a company is considering a $100,000 purchase that will bring in a continuous money stream of $15,000 per year for eight years. The money will be invested at 5%. First thing I'm going to look at is we're going to find the amount brought in by just the machine. This $100,000 purchase, how much money is it going to bring in over the eight years? Well, this is just a continuous money stream. We're not talking about interest. This is where we started the lesson, where we just have to take the amount is equal to the integral from 0 to the eight years of the money stream of $15,000 dt. And the antiderivative there is 15,000 t integrated from 0 to 8, which is 15,000 times 8 minus 15,000 times 0, which is 0. And so what we end up with is $120,000. So we spend 100 grand on this machine. We bring in $120,000. That seems like a good deal, right? Well, let's see what other options we had. First, let's add to the discussion. We didn't just have 120,000. It also earned some interest. So after investing, how much 
will the money stream be worth? This is the future value of a continuous money stream earning interest. We can treat it like a lump sum because we didn't have that 120000 up front. We just had that little dribble of money up front. And it accumulated to 120 over eight years. But the interest is going to grow over that eight years as well. So we're calculating a future value. What is this going to be worth in the future? And our future value formula said it was e to the interest rate of 0 0.05 times the amount of time, which is 8 years, integrated from 0 to the amount of time, which is 8 years, times the money stream, which is 15,000, e to the negative 0.05, the interest rate, times time dt. This will tell us how much money we have, including the 120 grand plus the interest that got earned over that time. So up front, we've got e to the 8 times 0 0.05 is 0.40 times e to the stuff is just e to the stuff. And then we divide by the negative 0 0.05. That's going to give me negative 300,000. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to 8. Which means we've got e to the 0.4 times negative 300,000 e to the negative 0 0.05 times 8 minus, and then that's a negative 300,000, which now makes it a plus. 300,000. And when we plug 0 into the exponent, we end up with e to the 0, which is just 1. And so we can plug this amount into our calculator to find out that not just $120,000, but including interest, we're now up to $147,547.41. So we spend 100 grand on a machine. We now have 147 grand in the bank. This is starting to sound like an even better deal. We should go out and buy the machine, right? Or should we? The question we need to also consider in this comparison is what is the present value? of the income stream. In other words, how much money now would be worth the same final amount, would be worth $147,000? So let's compare that to the present value. How much money now gives us one hundred forty-seven grand? That is the present value formula where we integrate from 0 to 8 of the 15,000 e to the negative 0.05 tdt. It's really the same formula as the future value. It just doesn't have the e out front. We already know to integrate that. That's e to the stuff. And we divide by the exponent of negative 0.05 to give us negative 300,000 integrated from 0 to 8 which means we have negative 300,000 e to the negative 0.05 times 8 minus a negative, which makes it positive, 300,000. And again, when I plug 0 into the exponent, we get e to the 0, which is 0. And so we find out that a present value, putting that in our calculator, of $98,903.99 would grow to the same amount as our future value from the machine. In other words, I can spend 100 grand on the machine 
to earn 147,000. Or I can take 90 grand, 98 grand right now, invest it, and it'll be worth the same amount. So should I spend the 100 grand or should I invest the 100 grand? Which one gives me a better result? Should we buy the machine? So one option is to put $100,000 into the machine. The other option is putting almost $99,000, a little bit less, in the bank. Both of them will give me the same amount of money, the same $147,000 in the end. As a business, I'm going to choose the less expensive option, which would be the $98,900. Should I buy the machine? The answer here is going to be no. It would be better to take that hundred grand and invest it. For the eight years at the five percent. Let's take a look at what that means. What would the hundred thousand dollars? be worth if invested, not purchasing the machine. This time, we're taking that $100,000 as a lump sum. And instead of buying the machine, I take it to the bank, put it in some type of investment, and I come back in eight years. This is just the regular PE to the RT formula. So we have a principal of $100,000, e to the 0 0.05 times the eight years. And we see that we end up with $149,182.47. So as a company, let's see if I can get both numbers on the screen, you see the at the top and the bottom. As a company, I can buy the machine and make $147,000. Or I can invest the same money and make $149,000. I'm going to invest that money instead of buying the machine, because I can make more money off my investment than the money stream that the machine creates for me. But let's change the situation a little bit. Let's say the machine goes on sale. For $95,000. No longer is it 100, now it's $95,000. Should they buy it? Well, remember we learned that you need a present value of $98,000 to be equivalent to the machine. Right now, we're only being asked to invest $95,000, which is less. They are spending less on the machine to get the same revenue as an investment in the bank. So as a company, I'm always going to spend less money to make the same money. So yes. I will say that the $95,000 would generate less revenue than the machine would generate or would create. So I want the machine because the machine will create more revenue for me. Let's take a look at the numbers just to compare them. Let's ask the question, how much 
would $95,000 be worth if invested, not purchasing the machine? Again, this is just a lump sum payment of $95,000 times e to the interest rate, which we've said is 0 0.05, times the eight years. And we plug that all in. And the bank would pay, or the investment would pay, $141,723.34. Well, $141 is definitely less than the amount we found here in B that the machine would create. So I'm going to buy the machine now that it's on sale because it's going to create 147 grand instead of 141 grand. And that's how we can make decisions based on investments and money streams and annuities using these calculus formulas. Take a look at the homework assignment to try a few of these on your own taking a look at future value, present value, investments, annuities. Come to class with questions, and we'll continue to discuss these even further.